Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to simulate a simple parach uh, parachute using an axisymmetric unstructured grid in OpenFoam. Um, we'll be running a pretty coarse simulation uh, w with these files and uh, it might be a good starting point for more detailed simulations of your own. Okay, so um, as usual our case folder contains our open foam files uh, necessary to run this uh, solution. The clean script um, is for your convenience to start over. The mesh contains the gmesh uh, scripts to generate our axisymmetric uh, parachute mesh. Um, this readme pretty much tells you what I'm saying right now and the run actually performs everything. So you can you can clone this from the GitHub account, uh, the link of which is in the description, um, and uh, just immediately start running by just running the run script. So um, let's take a look at the mesh. So this is our mesh. Um, we have, uh, you see this is an axisymmetric wedge. Um, for axisymmetric simulations, open foam um, just requires you to make an actual wedge shape and then define wedge boundary conditions on the two sides. Um, so in our case, we have two wedge, two wedge boundary conditions, one uh, slip boundary condition as the far, far side of the domain. And this is our actual parachute right here. It's a rigid parachute. Um, and... Uh, uh, which might mimic, you know, an actual parachute in, under full inflation, and uh, we define all of, all of these surfaces as a as walls, as simple walls. Um, you can see that the domain actually, you know, ends here, and it just goes in to form the wall of the parachute, and then continues on. Um, uh, you could actually make this an infinitely thin strip or a baffle as it's called in open foam. I actually have another tutorial on that. Uh, if you look in my past videos for baffle in the title. Um, but uh, for simplicity, I just decided to do like a uh, um, a little surface with some thickness and then just make them simple walls. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much our mesh. Let's let's take a look at the so standard unstructured grid. Um, as you can see, it's it, uh, it's pretty coarse and it runs pretty quickly. Um, all right, uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, uh, you can so I, I have actually configured this in the control dict under case files system control dict. I've configured this to uh, output force coefficients. So what I've done is I've taken the y direction, this upper direction, to be our drag direction and the radius of this uh, parachute to be the uh, uh, the circle area from the radius of the parachute to be our reference area. So from that from the actual force and that reference area, we can compute the um, drag coefficient. So uh, let's just go ahead and get on to the post-process results. I've run this ahead of time. So you can see I've created the streamlines. Here's our rigid parachute. And uh, yeah, so from afar, I'll just, I'll just show you kind of how it develops. I ran this for about 2,000 iterations. It might converge a little more uh, if you run it a little longer. Um, the drag coefficient was about 1.45, uh, which is pretty reasonable for a typical parachute. Um, pretty normal value. And uh, I'll run it once more up close. So you can see 
how everything develops. It's a really simple, quick, easy simulation. Um, I'm, I'm actually doing this uh, in preparation for a more complicated setup. Uh, where I, I was kind of thinking of a duct, um, except uh, inverted and with multiple elements. So like the side profile, this axisymmetric profile would look, look like a multi-element wing. Um, but except it's a duct and it gets larger and larger as it goes up. Uh, just an idea I had um, that I wanted to try out, so I first was going to uh, introduce this sim very simple parachute simulation. Um, but uh, anyways, that's all there is to it. As I said before, you can find the link to all of the code in, in the description. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. Thanks for listening.